Ja, hallo, Michael Adams von der PDEC in Toronto, PDEC 2017. Und ich habe jetzt bei mir den Steve von Parsinex. Den kennen Sie ja schon. Wir haben ja schon mehrere Videointerviews gemacht. Und Parsinex hatte ich auch ähm, Ende... Februar Ihnen schon ein paar Mal was erzählt, weil die Aktie einen sehr guten Move hatte und ähm, ich erst gesagt habe, ich würde vielleicht die Aktie verkaufen. Dann habe ich mich umentschieden, habe gesagt, wir bleiben doch dabei. Insbesondere halt äh, wollte ich warten auf dieses Video-Interview mit Steve und ja, schauen wir mal, was er Neues zu erzählen hat. So hi, Steve. Hi, Michael. Thanks for taking again uh, some time to talk to me, give me an update on Passenex. And um, yeah, the last couple of weeks have been really good for you. So yeah, yeah also stock price wise, not only fundamentally. So give us an update. What's what's new? Yeah, I mean, the big thing is we're producing. We're producing, we're selling. We put in the hard work in the last couple of years. We built the mine. Uh, we put in the new third at it, which is over there. Uh, we put in the new third at it, and that started production in September last year. That doubled our production. So we're going to do 60,000 tonnes, which is uh, 40 million pounds of zinc this year, uh, which is north of 25 million US in revenues uh, and at a good margin. And um, yeah, and I think people are finally seeing that. They're finally seeing that, you know, we kept going, we've, we've built the mine and uh, we're bringing on zinc production when the zinc price is going up. Uh, and uh, very few people are doing that. And uh, so uh, we're finally getting some recognition and our share price started to move. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it took some time, but as I said in the introduction, yeah, um, you guys constantly, even in the down markets, yeah, you, you advance the projects, you put things together in the bad market, yeah, while some or a lot of the other companies didn't do anything, right? And and finally, and it took, took I have to admit, it took the market longer than I was anticipating to finally recognize the value that I think you have in Passenex, right? And you, you were mentioning the production, which is increasing. Um, you have the joint venture partner, which you are very blessed with because they are really a good a good team a uh, partner in, in Turkey um, yeah and you still have these these DSO high highest grade stuff right yeah. so give us a little more insight because there's the difference between sulfide and oxide and yeah. there's different grades maybe fill us in on this a little bit yeah so uh, we're high up in the system uh, and when you're high up in the system it's uh, naturally oxide so we started with oxide and still the the majority of our resource is oxide. It's, it's a mineral called smithsonite, zinc carbonate, and that's about 32% zinc. So that's the majority of our production. But recently, and we reported this last year, we're starting to see the sulfides. And now, what it is, is the sulfides oxidize and make the, make the oxide. So the, the roots should be sulfide. And so we're starting to see the sulfide roots now, which is the mineral sphalerite. And we're seeing in situ grades, uh, some of the numbers we reported last year, meters of up to, well, greater than 60% zinc. It's unbelievable grade, pure sphalerite. Uh, and we've started to mine some of that. Still, as I said, m most of our production is oxide, but we've started to mine some of the sulfides uh, and we've been selling some of that. Uh, the stuff we've been selling recently was about 49% zinc. It's actually downgraded from pure sphalerite with some of the oxide, some of the some of the low grade 32% stuff, <laughs> downgrades to the high grade 60% stuff and you end up with 49. But anyhow, uh, it's still very good and at both those grades it's direct shipping. Right. So we don't need to process, we just crush and we sell. And uh, you know that's uh, that makes us very unique. Uh, this is a this is a fantastic unique deposit. Okay. And yeah, tell us about um, drilling. So what kind of drilling or more exploration? Yeah, there's exploration potential on the projects, right? It's not only production. Yeah. So tell us about the exploration potential. Um, is there a drill program planned yeah, for this year? Yeah, well, uh, we've been doing, and again, this year we're going to do 12,000 meters, so we're doing a lot of drilling. Um, there's two, there's a lot more upside here. Uh, there's a lot more um, opportunity. Uh, the two priorities are, first of all, I've already said, we're starting to see the sulfides now. The sulfides will go deeper. These systems can run kilometers. I mean, it's a, it's premature to say that we've got kilometers, but obviously we're optimistic and we keep drilling and uh, we expect to see that we'll see, you know, more of these sulfides. So, you know, that's a, that's priority focus number one, just to continue to build the resource uh, in sulfides on Panagazoo. Priority focus number two, and we're going to start to step this up this year, is stepping out a bit into the region. You know, uh, this is a, this is a zinc 
province actually. Uh, it's uh, it's called the Taurus Mountains and it's all limestones and that's the environment that gives you these type of carbonate replacement zincs. Um, you know, and looking at Panaga Zoo and, and looking at what we're seeing there and how, how great it is, it, logic says there should be more. Uh, we don't know where, uh, but but we think there's an opportunity to find more Pinaga zoos or, or, or components of things like this. Uh, and, and so we're going to go look for them. Uh, we think that there's, yeah, more to be found. It's not easy exploration. It, these are structurally controlled, so they're highly faulted area. Uh, lots of faults and and so the faults can you know make it move so you know you think it's there but then it's there uh, so it's not easy exploration but um, I think there's a lot more to be found okay great um, one last thing to, to just wrap up um, your shareholder base yeah I know that you have a really huge shareholder base in Europe especially Germany um, and of course the Germans are very close to Turkey yeah um, but what I saw here at this show and and maybe you can fill us in is that I had to stand in line yeah to get an interview time with with Steve and uh, which usually didn't happen right so especially over here in Canada so do, do you see some more increased interest from the Canadian North American shareholders yes the simple answer to that is yes I, I mean I think uh, we were saying a bit earlier I think Finally, people are catching on to our story. Uh, you know, the last couple of years were horrible. They were really tough for the whole industry and, you know, equally tough on us. Um, and, and particularly here in Canada, uh, people pulled back, you know, they pulled back in investment. Uh, but, you know, we can see at the Speed Act, there's a lot more people here this year. Uh, and I think there's a lot more interest and, and zinc is one of the things that people are looking for because, you know, the zinc price has gone up enormously uh, and there's probably still some upside on the zinc price. Uh, so, yeah, definitely the Canadian investors are coming back. But I did want to add one other thing and that is I've been, you know, really grateful for the investor interest we have in Germany and Austria and, and, and the world over there. Uh, you know, still, uh, you know, the Frankfurt markets are... Um, Uh, I don't know, 70% of our liquidity uh, and uh, you know clearly we've got a lot of good supporters over there and I'm, I'm very grateful for that support. Uh, good to see the Canadians back but grateful for the German and Austrians. Yeah, um, so sometimes the Germans are kind of the first guys right. to discover something, right? So sometimes we are like a little bit down the hole, but no, sometimes we are. Um, really last question, uh, there was something else coming to my mind. Um, you are in production so you have cash flow. Um, Are your plans right now, can you finance them out of your own cash flow or do you anticipate you need some additional financing? I, I guess I know the answer, but I would like to hear it from you. No, I mean, <laughs> what a difference a year makes. I mean, it, it's simple as that. Uh, you know, uh, with our share price going up, we, we had some warrants that were coming due. Uh, they're all in the money now and they're all getting exercised. So that's bringing in money into the, you know, our coffers in Canada. Uh, the mine itself is generating cash. Uh, we expect to have a really good cash generation uh, year this year from the mine. So really, to be quite honest, right at the moment, we're okay. Uh, you know, we've got money coming in in Canada, we've got money coming in in Turkey. Um, perhaps, you know, if our share price keeps going up, it opens up the opportunity in the future of uh, looking for the next step up. You know, we want to eventually build to a mid-tier company and you, you know, have to take the right steps at the right time. We haven't made any decision about that yet, but uh, you know, if we continue to strengthen, the market likes what they see and our share price goes up, it opens up some other future opportunities. But right at the moment, we're okay. No, for special opportunities, I, I totally agree. You, sometimes you need to do a financing, but as you know, especially over the last years, yeah, the companies just did these minor dilutive right. financings just to keep alive, and right. that's something which I can't see with Passenex. Okay, um, but one thing you brought up, and that's important for you to know, um, I'm a shareholder, I'm holding warrants, so I have a conflict of interest, right? Just full transparency. And yeah, for now, thank you very much. Uh, great update and uh, all, all the luck for Passenex. Thank you. Ja, also das war Pasinex, wie ich ihn auch versprochen hatte. Ich bin, ja, ich muss das natürlich jetzt alles nochmal mir dann zu Hause anschauen, aber ich bin, ich hatte auch noch mit ein paar anderen Leuten gesprochen, es gibt ja auch einen deutschen Direktor bei Pasinex, den Sven Olsen, und der hat mir auch noch so ein paar Dinge erzählt und ich glaube, ich werde, 
also meine, meine Entscheidung, dass ich die, den Verkauf der Parsinex zurückhalte, äh, fühle ich mich sehr wohl mit. Ja, also ich warte im Moment auf ein höheres Niveau äh, des Aktienkurses, ja, werde jetzt also nicht in dem Bereich, äh, den ich damals genannt habe, das war glaube ich so um die 33 Cent, werde ich nicht verkaufen, ähm, ist meine persönliche Entscheidung. Ja, Sie selber müssen natürlich äh, schauen, wie das in Ihr Portfolio passt. Was ich auf jeden Fall machen würde, ich würde es halt auf einem gewissen Niveau absichern, ja, dass mir der äh, entstandene Gewinn und eigentlich sollten alle von Ihnen jetzt bei der Parsnex im Gewinn sein, äh, dass wir den nicht mehr verlieren. Aber ansonsten äh, sieht das, denke ich mal, für den Rest des Jahres sehr gut aus und wir könnten da aus meiner Sicht, ja nochmal, ich habe einen Interessenkonflikt, aber aus meiner Sicht auch noch äh, deutlich höhere Aktienkurse sehen. In diesem Sinne von der PIDEC, äh, Ihr Michael Adams.